everyone. I'm Won Lee. Uh, I'm going to talk about histogram and frequency curve okay, today. I have explained four characteristics of data. One is representative value, say mean, median. And second, dispersion degree, variance standard deviation are equivalent. Okay? And third, skewness, fourth, kurtosis. They are four characteristics of data. But first two, mean and variance, are important. Okay? Now, today, I'm going to uh, explain about the histogram, uh, frequency, curve. Okay, let's go. We already see this value. They are 82 numbers. Okay? The smallest is here, 16, and largest, biggest value is 33. Then, how is this data distributed? What is the shape of distribution? To observe how the values between 16 and 33 are distributed, we can divide them into four classes. I took six classes, 15.5, uh, 18.5, to 18.5, 21.5, something like this. The width of a class is three. Why did I choose 15.3? The data are integers. So I use below unit, in other words, decimal uh, values. So 15.5 to 18.5, you don't have to use greater than, equal to, less than, less than, equal to, something like that kind of a notation, right? So they are only seven, these values. 11 and 23, 19, 14, 8 of them are located in these classes. So, okay, divide them into six classes and count the number of values that fall within each class, which will give us the absolute frequency distribution table. Okay, then we use this table and just to throw a histogram here. Uh, <clears throat> if we use percentage instead of absolute frequencies, we get a relative frequency distribution table. So from that table, relative frequency distribution table, we get relative frequency here. Same histogram. Okay, why this number 8.5, something like this, 8.5, 28, here, there is 28, here, 23, here, 7. So I just changed the scale of vertical axis. Okay, you understand that? Then the shape are equivalent. Based on this, we draw a histogram. We can easily see the shape of a distribution of data. It can be noted that shapes are absolute frequency histogram, relative frequency histogram are the same, are equivalent. The shape is equivalent. I use a different scale of a vertical axis. See? And if we smoothly connect the midpoint of a bar here, okay, midpoint of a bar, smoothly, then we get what? Frequency curve, like this. So we use this kind of a frequency curve, usually, okay, to explain how this data is distributed. You get it? Okay, it is not uh, difficult, it is a simple thing. Okay, furthermore, the sum of heights of a relative frequency histogram, the bars, 100%. This one is what? Say, probability. Okay? Relative frequency means probability. I think you know that kind of thing. And we can uh, use decimal 
value instead of percent, then it's going to be 0 0.085, 0 0.134, 0 0.280, something like this. Then the sum of these bars will be 1.0. Okay? Then 1.0. It is also possible to adjust uh, areas of a histogram bars to sum to 1.0. The area, sum of areas can be equal to 1.0. That is this one, okay, this histogram. Uh, to achieve this, we can convert the relative frequencies into decimal values between 0 and 1. Since the width of classes is 3, we divide each relative frequency by 3, then it's going to be here. This will allow the height of bars to be adjusted such that the sum of areas of the bars equals 1.0. Why I explain this kind of a thing? You have to, you know, uh, understand the probability distribution function later, but it is very much theoretical thing. So I think uh, I help you to understand why, how the probability distribution function can be defined such time, something like that. The shapes of two graphs will remain unchanged. Shapes of these two is same because I change scale of a vertical axis. Adjusting the scale of vertical x axis will yield graphs of the, the graphs of the sh same shape. Understanding this is important because it will help you in easily grasping the concept of probability. Concept of probability is equivalent to relative frequencies when we learn about probability distribution function sooner or later. Chapter 2, we will study probability and uh, probability distribution function. Okay, today is a very short lecture. Okay, thank you. Bye.